If you are just completely sick and tired of seeing the prices of new parts keep going up and up, whether it's a GPU or a CPU, then I have a solution for you. This is a used X99 gaming system that in total, the whole system is going to be coming under 300 USD for a build like this. And let me break this thing down. This has got an eight core 16 thread i7 5960X. Now this CPU is by any means a bit of an old but gold CPU. Sure, it's showing its age, but when you pick up something like this off the used market for 26 US dollars, it's definitely going to make for a extremely good value for money play, whether it's a gaming PC or a budget video editing rig. And so when I saw this price of this CPU, I knew I had to do something and build a PC based around just how much value you're getting here. Now, when you see the prices of X99 CPUs, a lot of the time you're gonna be thinking to yourself, well, I need to get a good motherboard. And here is where we actually did get pretty lucky when I was used PC parts hunting in Japan. I managed to find an X99 Tai Chi motherboard for around 28 US dollars. I couldn't believe it. I walked into this store. I asked one of the staff members there, is there anything wrong with this? Because even though it says there's nothing wrong with it, I'm just thinking, man, this is pretty cheap for a quality X99 board like this. And he said, no, nah, there's nothing wrong with it. You even get a seven day warranty to make sure that everything works out okay. And I thought at this point in time, I'm not even gonna bother bartering with this gentleman. I'm just gonna pay the asking price. Even though in Japan, most places, you actually do have to pay asking price. They don't really barter, unless sometimes they do take the tax off for tourists which if you guys like seeing what deals we get for used PC parts and the prices I pay, I've got a whole video dedicated towards used PC parts hunting recently in Japan, and I'll put the link up here. Now let's continue on with this build. This is X99, as you can see here, the whole build's working out fine. Before I had to mount the CPU cooler properly because the temperature was creeping close to 80 degrees, and I don't want my CPU to go completely toast before we even start building the gaming PC. But we've installed the CPU cooler and you'll notice here that all four of our memory channels are showing up absolutely fine. But you may notice, Brian, the speeds are a bit slow, right? 2400 megahertz DDR4. Now this is one of the limitations of X99 CPUs, in particular the first generation of CPUs, the i7-5960X, they're not gonna support really anything higher than 2800 megahertz. And so going with some budget 2400 megahertz, not only can I save money, but I can take advantage of X99's quad channel memory system. And so even though we've got slower memory in today's build, we can make up for that by utilizing that four channel memory support. The next component in the build here is the graphics card. Here we went with an RTX 2080. Now the funny thing is here is when I went looking for GPUs, especially in Tokyo, I noticed the prices on a lot of these graphics cards had gone up to really high levels. And so that's when I went online in Japan to an auction site and I found an RTX 2080 going for a really good price of around 150 USD. And when it comes to the power supply, we've got a used 600 watt unit here. We picked up for an absolute steal. Now I did take a gamble on this, it is junk, but booting it up now, there's no coil wine and everything seems okay. I guess we'll find out fully once the PC is completed and we're playing some games, whether this power supply is okay or not. Then we've got the case. Here's where I managed to find what looks like a new Zalman S4 Plus on Amazon. And with this case now being kind of over a decade old, much like the CPU that we're using here, I was surprised to see this in new condition. Then the next two deals that we got here, one was an SSD, which we actually picked up brand new because it was going roughly at the same prices that uh, used SSDs were going for. And then the cooler we got was a, what looks like a brand new unit that was being sold at hard off. This was going for around 10 US dollars. And when I opened it up and now that I've installed it, I can definitely tell you that this was a new unit despite it being again, just like the CPU in the case, about 10 years old. So with all the explanation of the parts out of the way, it's time to show you guys that tally once again on how good, at least on the surface, the price performance can be on the used market. Now, one thing you guys may be wanting to find out about is the Windows 11 support, right? A lot of older systems like this just won't be supported in Windows 11. And here's where I do have a solution with today's video sponsor, and that is we're gonna go with Windows 10 Enterprise Edition and completely get around any of the problems with support getting cut out this year with Windows 10 and also not having to put up with the laggy interface as well as lack of support for older systems like this with Windows 11. Anyhow, let's get on to finishing off this build and seeing what kind of tuning we can do on the system, then ultimately loading up our Windows and getting our desktop to perform with the new transformer model that's been supported on all RTX cards, which hopefully 
should give us a lot of tweaking to do and we'll do some comparisons with it on versus off to see if it really brings an RTX 2080 back to life, not just in terms of performance, but also price performance. PC is now complete and we're gonna tune it up quickly. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm just using settings off the top of my memory. In other words, in the past, I used to tune a lot of X99 systems up. So I can basically lock in performance gain settings that won't cause me hassles later on that I know should work absolutely fine. And here's where for the CPU, we're gonna go with 4.4 gigahertz or 44 and set this in manually with a voltage of 1.25 volt on manual override and also for the load line calibration, we just set that somewhere to the middle. And I found off the top of my head, these settings usually work for all X99 Haswell generation CPUs like the 5820K or now the i7-5960X. Then for our memory, we've got the four sticks here. I just like to boost it to 1.25 volt and also then manually lock in the 2400 megahertz profile. But on top of that, drop the timings down here to CL15 and also a command rate of one. This is important for getting the latency lower. And when it comes to DDR4 memory, the lower the latency is, generally the higher the FPS is going to be. So we can also try and edge out 14 on the CL14 there, which we're gonna try and do and reset. But with that aside, it's now time to save these settings. We can also save it in as a profile and just call this tuned, tuned 5960X and then install our Windows 10 Enterprise IoT. And now it's time to finally install Windows 10, except we've got a bit of a twist this time around, and that is we are going to install Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. Now, a lot of people have been asking, what do we do when Windows 10, the regular Pro Edition, runs out of support later this year? Well, there's some good news here, and that is we've got a few options. We can go with 2019, that's got 10 years support, so that'll finish in 2029. And then we've got also 2021, which features the regular enterprise, which will end in late 2027, going on to 2028. Then you've also got enterprise IOT, and that will go all the way to 2032 in terms of support, which makes it so that Windows 10 is still very well much alive and kicking absolutely fine. Now, the difference between 2019 and 2021 is that 2021 features the latest support for the GPU hardware accelerated scheduling, which means that 2021, you'll need this in particular, this update to use things like frame generation with DLSS 3 and 4, for instance. However, if you don't care for any of that, then 2019 LTSC is actually gonna be very good in terms of keeping a completely stripped down Windows. But then we go to 2021 and it's still a similar story. There's basically a lot less clutter and you don't get slammed with ads like you do in Windows 11 nowadays, but also it doesn't introduce anything new to the Windows over time. For instance, Windows 10 Pro even got this forced uh, co-pilot update and other things that just get rammed in your face and you don't even ask for them to be installed. Enterprise editions of Windows 10 basically put that Windows in a time capsule and you only then get security updates for it, which actually makes it for people who want less hassles with Windows and want it just to work properly, a very good thing. Now, here's the best thing about today's video is that VDIP SCD Keys has introduced the Windows 2021 Enterprise Key and you can get this for under $10 when you use that coupon code TYC. And you may be thinking, Brian, this is really cheap. And that's because I pushed VIP SCD keys to start stocking more enterprise keys, whether it's 2021 or whether it's 2019. I'll put the links in the description below for both these additions. And you can now get that extra support as well as getting, in my opinion, a much better version of Windows 10 to begin with, with a lot less clutter. And of course, baked in telemetry that they've included over the years and look at what Windows 11's turned into. But of course, if you wanna go with Windows 11 too, they've got keys going for about $20 after you use that coupon code TYC. So the choices are yours, but for this particular build, we're going with a 10 enterprise install and we're gonna keep things lightweight 
But also stay tuned for next month, I'll have a full guide on Windows 10 Enterprise and how to get the most out of it as well as tuning this thing up for you guys who are like me, I guess, and want to stay on Windows 10, because in my opinion, it's just such a good OS, not just for gaming, but to get things done. And with that aside, let's get our games installed, and see what this PC can pull off. And here we are now finally at the gaming benchmark numbers as well as the conclusion for this gaming PC. I spent a few hours playing games on this system as well as testing side-by-side -side comparisons with the Transformer model versus the original DLSS that would be made for that game when it first launched as well as testing out things like native 4K. And the first example we'll pull up here is Kingdom Come Deliverance, where we did lose a little bit of FPS with DLSS standard quality versus using the new Transformer K model. However, we we're still getting around 50 average FPS at 4K. And in my opinion, the detail looked even better than native 4K. So what I mean by this is I'll just show you guys the side-by-side -side comparisons here. And you can still see that this is a playable experience with this DLSS on 4K with an RTX 2080 and this i7-5960X. Now the CPU itself actually did a really good job of not just handling the game at 4K, which shouldn't be that hard, albeit on the CPU, it also did a good job of really not stuttering as we're playing the game. And also the next example that we're going to pull up for you guys here is Marvel Rivals. And we're testing this out, just playing a bit of multiplayer online gameplay here. And we can see that the Transformer model, even on low settings at 4K, did an absolutely phenomenal job of making the image just so crisp and sharp. I was really shocked at how good this looked when it came to life and you're using that latest Transformer model, which you can just manually set in the NVIDIA app. And so this is just that manual override setting. Now, the game does have to support DLSS. If the game doesn't manually support DLSS, unfortunately, you won't be able to take advantage of the new Transformer model. For instance, the next game we're gonna pull up here is a free game that I picked up off Epic Games. It's actually still available for another few days, but this only supports FSR, not DLSS. So I couldn't manually override the setting and also this game did manage to incur a little bit of stuttering especially when we went to a new scene and things were getting loaded up we did have a little bit of stuttering coming into play here but the other two games marvel rivals played incredibly smooth as well as the kingdom come deliverance too these uh, games were giving out just a really good experience overall i was extremely impressed by what the new transformer model can do when you manually set it. Now in both cases, we did lose a little bit of FPS, but in my opinion, it was definitely worth it to enable this setting and just really get an incredibly sharp image. So if you guys do have even an RTX 2000 series card, you can take advantage of this today and just extract so much more value out of your gaming PC. However, with that aside, we did do some other things in Windows, like quickly tune up the system, inspector, taking off those patches that would otherwise affect FPS. And also when it came to the power, we put on high power profile and we take off some of those Windows services just to have our PC running a little bit better. Now, when it came to the temperatures of the CPU and the GPU, it is winter here in Japan, so it is a little bit colder, like around 15 degrees where I'm at, but the CPU and the GPU temps were absolutely fine. And as you may or may not be hearing right now, this PC is actually pretty quiet. So overall, when it comes to building a used gaming PC, I'll put some links in the description below, but you guys can extract so much value out of a system like this and it can even play games at 4k and when i check the prices of ips 4k monitors right now they're actually coming down a lot in price too so you can really set something up take advantage of that new dlss transformer model and get a really sharp and crisp image out of this whole system now when it came to power consumption also another thing we did do is undervolt the rtx 2080 since it is a reference blower cooler undervolting it gives us basically the same performance but also ends up lowering the power consumption which in turn lowers the temperatures and the heat 
which is produced by the GPU. And then when it came to the i7, of course, we overclocked that because the base clock speeds only really got up to 3.5 gigahertz. So taking this thing to 4.4 gigahertz just extracts a lot more speed, which since the CPU is pretty old, we're definitely gonna need those speeds in this day and age and these latest titles. Anyhow, with all those numbers out of the way, if you guys want to see a dedicated video on the i7-5960X and what it can do with, say, a higher pairing of a GPU, maybe something like an RTX 3080 or even an RTX 4070, then I can make a video like that happen where we compare this CPU against, say, the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and just see basically how much performance you'd be missing out getting a CPU like this off the used market and then tuning it a bit versus a 9800X 3D, which you can't really tune a whole lot as it's already been pushed close to its maximum out of the box, unlike this 5960X, which has a lot of headroom. Anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. I'll leave some links in the description below if you want to get a Windows Enterprise key as well as where to download the ISO from. And also, I'll leave some links to the parts that we used in today's build. Although, if you do buy these parts off eBay, they're generally going to be more expensive than what we put them in today's build, getting local deals, albeit the RTX 2080, the most expensive part in the build. We did get that off an online deal. And lastly, I want to say it's never been a better time, in my opinion, to be a used PC enthusiast where the value is just absolutely off the charts. This is a really good PC that we put together here in just a matter of a couple of days in terms of sourcing the parts. It wasn't anything crazy. I didn't really find any one-off deals that were just, I'm never going to get again. It was just really solid in general. Anyway, that's enough talking from me. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.